Hello friends. In this lecture, we are going to learn about classless IP addressing. Okay. So last time we learned about classful IP addressing, where we saw that our addresses could be categorized into class A, B, C, and D, where class A had 8 bits for the network ID and 24 bits for your host ID. Class B had 16 bits for your network ID and 16 bits for your host and class C had 8 bits for the network, 24 bits for the network ID and just 8 bits for the host ID and so on. But the problem was that in class A, there were very few, just 2 to the power of 8 class A networks were there, which is 256. And each class A network has so many hosts. So you can guess that it has 2 to the power of 24 hosts, which is too much for any of organization, however big it may be. Okay, so this way, a lot of addresses, IP address, which is a very costly resource, is wasted. Okay, it's just wasted. So this is not a very good idea to waste IP addresses when you have it very few of them. Okay, B for class B, still it had 2 to the power of 16 addresses in each of the class B networks. Here also there was quite a few wastage. Class C now has many networks but it has just 8 hosts for the one network. Okay, 8 bits for the net hosts and 2 to the power of 8. So 256. IP addresses so this became a bit small and D in fact smaller okay so this way it was not very perfect at it was kind of rigid that okay only these classes are there what if I want that okay I should have 2 to the power of 12 hosts it's not allowed here what if I want 2 to the power of 10 hosts again not allowed so if I want to be flexible enough okay so what should I do so here is the solution classless addressing okay so it provides you with different sizes of your network so in this particular lecture our objective will be to understand the classless addressing mode and look at how do we define the network address okay and then what should be the size of the network how are the first and the last ip addresses known how to create subnets and so on Okay, so let's first find the definition. In a classless addressing, variable length blocks are assigned. Okay, and they are not belonging to any class. In this architecture, we have 2 to the power of 32 addresses. It's divided into different sizes block. Okay, you don't have a fixed size that, okay, it should be 2 to the power of 24. Many hosts should be there. 2 to the power of 16 or 2 to the power of 8 hosts can only be there in a network. You can have now 2 to the power of 20 hosts if you want by having just 12 bits for your network and how many so 20 bits for your host ID okay. You can have a network with 2 to the power of 12 or 1024 into 4 so something around 5000 hosts by having 20 bits for your network and 12 bits for your host ID okay so this way your network can become a little smaller okay and you can have the flexibility that's most important okay so now this address space this figure just tells that okay your sizes can be different but there are few restrictions two restrictions as such what are they the beginning address should be divisible by block size okay your network where it starts so there should be a block so block will have a starting address okay and an end address okay and you should have a block size that should be a power of two these two restrictions first and second should be there okay and that is important so first one is important because of something like if we have let's say our network size is 512 it is a power of 2 this is fine our starting address if it is why should it be divisible by the block size so it means starting address should be something like 512 a okay then what will happen my end address will be what will it be it will be adding 512 to it so now what happens this means that again because 512 
is again divisible this block size will be added so your end address will also be divisible by your block size okay and then we can start new blocks okay so this way 512 size block can start again okay so something like this so let's try to see you can represent your ip address in this format okay so let's try to see your ip address can be written as 831 with these a31 a30 are all uh, 0 1 binary number they can be either 0 or 1 and it can continue till a22 square plus a12 to the power of 1 plus a02 to the power of 0 this will help us in finding divisibility okay so if i say that okay our start address you are given some number to find that if start address is divisible by let's say 256 what you need to do is that 256 is 2 to the power of 8 so your ip address will be a31 2 to the power of 31 plus a30 2 to the power of 30 and it will go up to a let's say a8 2 to the power of 8 plus a7 2 to the power of 7 plus a1 2 to the power of 1 plus a0 okay so this is there now whatever may be here okay 1 0 or whatever this everything will be divisible by 2 to the power of 8 i can take 2 to the power of 8 it will be a 31 2 to the power of 23 plus a 30 2 to the power of 22 till a 8 so it this is whatever be the a 31 a 30 and so on this part will be divisible by 2 to the power of 8 which is 256 so if your last number in the decimal dotted decimal format is divisible by 256 this whole thing will be divisible by 256 okay so this way we will use to find okay what if your ip address is divisible okay can it be a block size number okay so let's see a few questions to understand the concept which of the following can be beginning address of a block that contains 16 address okay so 16 addresses if you have in the block your first block okay the beginning address should be divisible by 16 so this question now becomes very simple with the previous idea i have ip address as a31 2 to the power of 31 plus a30 2 to the power of 30 plus a8 2 to the power of 8 till again so a 5 2 to the power of 5 plus a 4 2 to the power of 4 plus a 3 2 cube plus a 2 2 square plus a 1 2 to the power of 1 plus a 0 okay so now whatever be here so these are all divisible by 2 to the power of 4 we just need to check here okay so in this one you can write let's say so this is 2 to the power of 5 your last 8 bits so 0 1 2 3 4 2 to the power of 5 is 1 rest of them are zeros okay so we have here till a3 we had to check so all are zeros. so this number is divisible by 16 because 0 is divisible by 16 so what we do we will say that okay this number is divisible by 16 so this is can be the first address of a network with block size 16 this number 80 let's try to see 80 is 64 plus 16 i think yeah so here it will become 64 this is a4 so a6 this will become 1 16 is 2 to the power of 4 so this will be your so again what will happen is last four bits are all zero so this will be also divisible by 16 this one let's try to check 52 so this is 40 till here 12 so it means 8 plus 4 so now what will happen this is this one will become 1 this one will become 1 0 0 so this is now this number is 12 12 is not divisible by 16 so this will not work similarly 44 will also not work okay because 44 is 32 plus 8 so 40 plus 4 
so again 8 plus 4 will come this is not divisible by 12 so this question we could solve okay and we don't have to divide this i don't have to convert this ip address to completely decimal number okay with partial conversion also i can do so here this is the solution you can see but that was much easier now it says that which of the following can be beginning address of a block that contains 256 addresses okay so again 256 is 2 to the power of 8 so a31 2 to the power of 31 plus a8 2 to the power of 8 so till here everything is divisible by 2 to the power of 8 so this one becomes a7 2 to the power of 7 this is the just the last byte okay so this part so if this is divisible by 256 your answer is divisible by 256 32 is not divisible 0 is divisible 0 is divisible here so these two can be the first address beginning address of the block this cannot be so your answers are again here it says b and c are the addresses okay so this is also fine next comes 1024 so this is again so this is the same idea mathematical idea 1024 is 2 to the power of 10 so you go on till a 31 2 to the power of 31 till a 10 2 to the power of 10 so here till here whatever is there you don't need to consider everything will be divisible by 2 to the power of 10 so a 9 2 to the power of 9 plus a 8 2 to the power of 8 a 7 2 to the power of 7 till a 0 you should think okay so now what will happen let's try to see the bits of here so let's try to check for this one 32 and 37 let's try to check the binary number so 37 is 32 plus 4 plus 1 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so this is 1 32 is 0 1 2 3 4 5 so this is 1 then 0 1 2 this is 1 and this is 1 everything else is 0 so here and so what happens last two bits for this 37 is 0 1 okay this is there so this is just and then the last bit is 32 so this is just the decimal so 32 plus 1 into 2 to the power of so this will be 2 to the power of 8 so 2 to the power of 8 is 64 plus 32 so this number is 96 is not divisible by 1024 hence this overall this number is not divisible so this cannot be the beginning address let us check this one so last part is white is 0 and then we need to find a9 and a8 so a9 and a8 because 32 is again just this bit is there so a9 and a8 will be 0 0 so this will be all zero so this number is divisible by 1024 so this will be there okay and you can check for all others like this this will be 52 what are the last two bits of 24 so 16 plus 8 so again so what will happen your a9 and a8 will be 0 0 and then what happens this was for 24 and 52 so a9 and a8 are 0 0 so 52 is not divisible by 1024 so this also will not be there okay so this is the way for solving i hope you understand this now what about format of classless addressing scheme so it's x dot y dot z dot t slash n okay so this is the format for classless addressing and what happens is if you have these are the masks that are shown okay so how to find the network part so for example if you have a slash 8 network then what will happen this means your network part is 8 bits so you apply 255 to it and rest of it so this will be your network part okay slash 16 then what is the mask it is telling about the mask 
that what is the network part okay that n means what is the network part how, how will you find so you and this your ip address with your network mask then it will give you the network address okay and it is the beginning address so what is the first address in a block if one of the addresses is this so let's try to see this interesting thing so you are given the first address in the block it's asking if one of the addresses is this if one of the address is this then what happens and this is your network mask so what will happen you have all the first 27 bits as 1 and rest of the 5 bits as 0 and you write the bit bit representation of this and these two and you will get the number that is the first address or the network address so the prefix length 27 which means that we must keep the first 27 bits as it is and change the remaining 5 bits to 0 the following shows the process so address in binary for this one is there okay so this is the first decimal second third and fourth we keep the left 27 bits okay and rest of them we put at 0 so the address becomes 167 okay so we just need to check the last address okay so what is it 82 82 can be represented as 01010010 and you need to have 27 so last 5 bits you are 0 okay and only 3 bits are 1 okay so what will happen so we will get 01000000 so this is 2 to the power of 6 so that's why 64 we are getting here okay so this is there so you get the network address or the ip the first address of the sub network is the network address also what is the first address in the block if one of the addresses is this okay so now the network address is 20 bits so you have find the binary representation of this and then make the last 12 bits as 0 okay and keep the rest of the bits so the first second and the fourth bytes are easy okay how and why okay let's try to check so here what happens only the last 12 bits we want to make zero of these i want to make the last 12 bits as zero so what will happen last 12 bits means last 8 bits will be zero so the last decimal will become zero now 84 is 64 plus 16 plus 4 so this is so i can write it like 2 to the power of 6 is this so 1 0 and this is 2 to the power of 6, 2 to the power of 5 is 0, 2 to the power of 4 is there, 2 to the power of 3 is 0, this root square, 2 to the power of 1 and this. This is the binary representation of 84. And in this what we do? So last 20. So last 20 means here we are making the last 4 bits as 0. These as 0. So the number is just 64 plus 16. So 80. So uh, our I, uh, network address is 140, 120. These are all ones ended with one. So they will remain the same 80.0. So, uh, so this will be the first address. So 140.120.80.0.